Hi everyone! So today we're going to be doing a little lecture and you'll be taking some notes on the electromagnetic spectrum. So let's go ahead and get into it. So before taking notes, you should have watched this amazing clear video that introduced electromagnetic waves and the spectrum to you so you knew basic definitions of it and examples of where you might be affected by them or be using them in your everyday life. So if you haven't already watched it, please pause this video here and watch that video first. So now that you've been introduced to EM waves or electromagnetic waves, let's formally talk about the essential things that you need to know about them. So the first thing that you need to know about electromagnetic waves is that they are a way to describe light. Light is a form of electromagnetic waves, and we'll see that later on, EM waves um, travel at the speed of light, which is what ties them together. Electromagnetic waves are still waves, which means that they transmit energy. However, they do not need a medium to do so. This is different from mechanical waves, which do need a medium to transmit energy. And I'm sure that many of you have heard the phrase electromagnetic radiation, so let's define what that is. Electromagnetic radiation is the energy transfer associated due to electromagnetic waves, or EM waves. Given that energy transfer can occur between different objects, let's see the different ways that EM waves can interact with matter. And so before I get started with showing you the different ways that they can interact with matter, I want you to know that the blue is the electromagnetic wave that is hitting a boundary, which is the gray, between two mediums. And as we know, waves interact with different mediums in different ways. So let's see what those different ways are. The first way that they can interact is if the wave just goes straight through the boundary to the other medium. And this is known as transmission. Another way that they can interact is by bouncing off the other medium because it cannot go through it. And this is known as reflection. So as you can see in this example, the reflection is at an angle because the light is hitting the matter at an angle as well. If the light was to hit the object straight on, it would reflect straight back if it was a, an example of reflection. This is actually how we see color because the light that's reflected off an object is the color that we perceive. And so for example, this banana is yellow because the light that's reflecting off the banana is yellow. The next example of an EM interaction with matter is if the EM wave is simply absorbed by the second matter, and so this is known as absorption. EM waves can also spread in different directions as they pass through the other medium, and so this is known as diffraction. Another way that EM wave can interact with matter is that some waves can go through the second medium, but they bend at an angle as they enter a new medium. So this is different from transmission because they're not going straight through, they're actually bending at an angle. This is something known as refraction, and an example of refraction is looking through water. And so if you ever look through water, you know that the images are a little bit distorted. It's because the light that is hitting those objects in the water are being refracted at an angle and the water is a new medium that's causing that light to refract. Finally, I want you to consider what might happen if we change the shape of the second medium. I'm gonna go ahead and move my window here so we can take a look at this example. So what happens, for example, if the light hits an object that is in a different shape, like it's spherical. Um, if the object is spherical and light cannot go through it, then the light can actually refract in one of many different directions. So for example, it can bounce off in this direction, that's one possibility. It can also bounce off in this direction, or this direction, or this direction. This is something known as scattering. So the EM wave is basically bouncing off or scattering in one of many different directions. So it's not to say it's going in all four of these directions, it's choosing one of these routes and it's scattering in that direction. So not only are there different ways in which electromagnetic waves can interact with matter, but there are many different types of electromagnetic waves, and these different types of electromagnetic waves are organized by their wavelengths, which we'll see on the next slide will impact their frequencies and their properties. But what about their speed? As I stated before, electromagnetic waves are related to light because they all travel at the same speed, which is the speed of light. And the speed of light is 3 times 10 raised to the 8th meters per second, so very, very quick. Now, let's go ahead and look at the different types of electromagnetic waves based on their wavelengths and frequencies. So before we get into the types of electromagnetic waves that are in the spectrum, let me go ahead and show you the whole screen. Um, let's review the relationship between frequency and wavelength. So low frequencies are related to, as you can see from this image, 
longer wavelength. So I like to remember this because low goes with long, they both start with LO something. On the other hand, high frequencies are related to shorter wavelengths. The more cycles per second, the shorter the wavelength of that wave is. Now let's get into the types of EM waves. From the longest wavelength and lowest frequency to the shortest wavelength and highest frequency we have radio waves, microwaves, and infrared waves. These are all electromagnetic waves that have long wavelengths and low frequencies. In the middle we have visible light and so this is what we actually see and what we perceive as color. And so as you know the colors that we see are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. As we move away from visible light and we get shorter and shorter wavelengths or higher and higher frequencies, we get ultraviolet rays, which you've probably heard of is coming from the sun, x-rays, which we've used in the doctor's office, and finally gamma rays. So how does energy relate to all of this? Well, as we know, waves carry energy. But how much energy? Can we tell? It turns out that the amount of energy that an electromagnetic wave has depends on its frequency. And this can be seen through the following equation, that the energy of one photon of light is equal to h, Planck's constant, times a frequency. Planck's constant is the following value. It's 6 times 10 raised to the negative 34 joules times seconds. So as you can see from this equation, energy and frequency have a direct relationship such that if frequency goes up, the energy will also go up. And if frequency goes down, energy will also go down because Planck's constant is staying the same. Another word that you may frequently hear about with regard to energy is the term photon. So what is a photon? A photon is a packet of electromagnetic energy. In other words, it is the basic unit for electromagnetic energy or light. One photon is the smallest amount of electromagnetic energy that is quantifiable or quantized. It's, in other words, it is the smallest amount of electromagnetic energy that is given a quantity. Some things to note about photons are that they do not have mass and they do not have electric charge. They're only a measure of the amount of energy that matter can absorb at any given time. And so now that you've learned a lot about electromagnetic waves, the definitions, the different types that exist, I challenge you to do some research on these different types of waves. Describe them. What are their specific wavelengths? How do we categorize them based off of that? Where do they come from? What is their source? And of course, how are they used in our everyday life? What are some gadgets and appliances that emit these types of waves? And so thank you so much for watching. And always remember, this is fine and I can do it. I'll see you next video. Bye.